your holiday should look like and you and you know that it is not going to turn out that way. So just the expectation of things not playing out the way you would like for it to look can put you in this down spirit. And so, um, and like Dr. Tony was saying, that's that sadness and that anxiety, constantly worrying about, you know, what what's going to happen? How can you do this? When can you do this? Um, who's going to do this? Um, it puts all, a, a lot of intense pressures on yourself um, that with situations you may not have the answers to. So just know when that season starts, when this holiday season start kicking in, that's when you're more likely to start feeling the difference in your temperament. Mm -hmm. And I think some of it starts, uh, the smallest thing, it could be a fragrance, right? So sometimes we smell what is pumpkin spice, pumpkin like that that fragrance that we smell that can kick it off like oh well i remember that we, we always had that lid or it's getting me in the season so now i'm starting to feel down i'm starting to think about you know my mama who ain't here my brother who's not here this was uncle joe favorite scene and it just makes you get into that sadness like dang i miss him right and mm -hmm. so um it could be that now i do have a question is there a difference with the seasonal depression and then holiday blues? Because I think some people may get that kind of mixed up. The seasonal depression, when you feel the fall coming, you may feel that turnover. So can one of y'all kind of explain that a little bit? Well, the difference specifically with um, seasonal affective disorder, which um, is known as SAG in the medical term, in the medical sense, um, it is more associated with just the change of seasons. It's not necessarily tied to a holiday. So you can go into seasonal affective um, depression. I mean, you can go into seasonal affective depression in when the seasons change from summer to fall, from summer to spring or spring to fall. Um, it's just not tied to the holiday season. The difference between holiday blues is that it's specifically tied to the holiday season. Mm -hmm. You're only feeling this way during the Thanksgiving and Christmas, um, during the Thanksgiving and Christmas season. Okay. And, and that goes back to what Dr. Barnes was saying, those expectations that you know, keeping up with the family rituals, um, knowing that the pressures of having to cook this big dinner or having to, if you marry, deal with the in-laws that you really don't want to deal with, but the expectation of you showing up, being present. And then those myths of these are the times that everybody should bub be bubbly, happy, loving, unity. But then we missed the component that we are entering in spaces where we dealing with a lot of different personalities. And so that's what it means about we have to prepare ourselves. And sometimes we don't know or have the skills and the tools to prepare ourselves for these stressors. Mm -hmm. And so the further we get into this dialogue, we'll go back and forth with what some of those stressors look like, you know, because we have to, for whatever we've been taught and told, we have to show up this way for this particular event, or we have to put on this elaborate Thanksgiving um, party or this elaborate Christmas party, or we have to attend this Christmas party when you may not even be feeling it, but the stresses of, I have to show up. Right. And then what do I do with those stressors? So a lot of that has to, you know, do with those society pressures and those family rituals that we, we take on, but we hadn't been taught how to process that stuff. So all of this is, we're going to get into learning boundaries. Right. I'm glad you brought that up. And Dr. Tony, by saying that, you know, the society say we have to be here, we have to show up, this is the tradition. Is it okay if I'm, you know, I can, is it okay for me to limit some of my uh, family traditions? Is it okay for me to say, okay, I'm going to go to three parties this year. I'm going to go to the work party, my uh, immediate family party, and probably my, uh, you know, friend party, but I won't go to everybody's Thanksgiving dinner. I won't go to everybody's Christmas party. Is that okay for me to limit that? Does that make me a bad person? And, and that's a question that has to be answered individually. And for me, what I usually ask people and myself before I take on things moving forward, and this is something that I had to learn to do, to ask myself, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. What am I going to get out of this? How is this going to impact me? And so if those things, those questions are going to be if they're going to trigger some type of unhealthy or unpleasant move for me, I have to check in for myself and then learn how to utilize the word no and be okay with that. 
be okay with. Um, so it's individualized what you want to do to protect you because mm -hmm. most times we're doing stuff for other people around these holiday seasons and that's where that that holiday blues kick in because we 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 driving ourselves to be present and attentive to other people and then we lose being present and attentive to ourselves agreed and I want to add to that, um, Dr. Johnson, it is not, there is nothing absolutely wrong with you making the decision to attend this party as opposed to this party or attend this event as opposed to uh, this event or to not attend an event that you normally go to um, if that's what you so choose. Again, again, I have to keep reiterating the expectations. Those expect trying to feel the expectations of what you did last year or what other people want you to do. Um, that alone leads to a lot of that holiday blues um, because we are, again, like Dr. J um, Jones was saying, we are trying to do what other people would like for us to do rather than answering the question, is this something that I even feel like doing today? Now, is it okay for you to just soak in your room and not want to do anything or go anywhere or talk to anybody? No, that is absolutely not okay. And that's not what I'm suggesting, but I am suggesting that you make the decision to decide how you will spend your holidays, what you will do during your holidays and creating a ritual for you and not based on what's always been done. I know for me, that was a hard, a hard lesson to learn because after losing my grandmother. And the holiday still hasn't been the same since we lost her because let's just face it, in African-American families, that you have that one vital person that's the, the sail of the ship. Like every, she just holds everything together. She's the glue. And so losing her on Thanksgiving day, was a really hard pill for my family. And ever since that Thanksgiving day, 2005, the way my family and I celebrate Thanksgiving has never been the same. We don't get together we because everybody's always together at her house. And so it took having to figure out now, what am I gonna do? You know, because that's what I did my whole life, my whole childhood. And so if that's not what I'm doing on Thanksgiving, then what am I doing? And so I had to learn how to recreate what celebrating Thanksgiving was going to look like for me until I had my own family. And then I recreated what that looks like for us. But again, I can't, I can't worry about what others expect for me to do or expect for me to be. It's all about how do I feel with being there? And if I feel like that's something that a tradition, I even want to continue, you know? So we we have the right to make those choices. Every invitation you get, um, if it's not going to put you in a good place or help you get out of a bad place, then we sometimes need to say no to certain invitations. Agreed, agreed. Now, um, I talked about the other day how important it was to have a support system because this is the time that we need it. We don't need to be by ourselves. Yeah. I know one of you all brought up about being, this, you, uh, Dr. Bones, not being by yourself. And I'm not telling you to go in your room and dwell this and that. This is when you need a time to have your support system. They can be there for you to lean on. I told y'all that's my song, Lean On Me. That makes me think about my support system. They're there. You don't have to be alone, but you need to limit whatever's going to trigger you in, in, in so many words. So mm -hmm. for, for those who have experienced the holiday blues but did not know what are some of the symptoms like what have you all seen uh you can say in your sales and your class like what have y'all seen that um whether some warning signs or symptoms that they're dealing with the holiday blues uh, what dr Bourne said i see a lot of isolation mm -hmm. um just completely isolate shut down not being present um when you would normally be present um just removing yourself. And that's honestly, guys, that is something that we do not encourage you to do because that's a rabbit hole that you can find yourself so deep in that it's hard to come out of. Um, but we do see a lot of that myself and my family. I see it um, because we have a lot of close family members, like my sister, um, my uncle and my aunt and my aunt that, that uh, passed away from a suicide. For her, she had a twin, her twin is still here. So these holidays are not the same for my family. And so what we had to learn to do was to, to be present and still come together, even though it was hard 
to know that they was not there any longer to joke with us, but it was like something, honestly, it's like you really have to force yourself to stay present in that moment because you don't want to go in that spiral hole of isolating yourself. You do want to take some time. And when you said your support system, Dr. Johnson, one thing that I would truly um, encourage people to do when we have that support system, make sure it's a collective few of people that if we call them and they hear something in our voice, we ain't turned around having to take care of them mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we would be in a dark place. And then we think, and we calling them to help us through a trying time. And then we left having to take care of them when we going through ourselves. So we have to assess the people that that we truly say, this is a person that I can call that's gonna boost my spirit when I'm feeling this way. Mm -hmm. Not this person that's gonna wobble with me mm -hmm. while I'm here, but they're gonna allow me to be there, but they're gonna do something to help uplift my spirit when I'm talking to them or when I'm around them. So we have to, it's sad, but we have to be mindful of that too, because we can be in a place and end up being a caretaker for somebody else that we call mm -hmm. thinking gonna help us. Yes. I want to add um, when we're looking for signs and symptoms of, holiday, of the holiday blues, you have to know that when you people are sleeping in, think about the holidays. The holidays is time for enjoyment. It's time for parties. It's time for, you know, just interaction, mm -hmm. um, excitement. And so when you find people that are often, and I mean, not just oh, every now and then, but often, oh, I'm sleeping in, uh, I don't feel like doing anything right now, um, that's, a, that's a red flag. Because who, honestly, who wants to be by themselves? Who wants to be in the bed sleep during the holiday season? You know, especially when they, there are so many things that they can be involved in or interacting with other people in, no one's just going to choose to say, okay, well, um, I'm, I'm just not feel, I'm feeling tired. And every, every single time you turn around, they're just in a bed sleep, not going anywhere. That's a red flag. Um, also, think about the holidays. People love to eat during the holidays. That's when we all forgive ourselves for everything that we're about to partake in and in the new year we want to get it right and right. try to get all them extra pounds off when you find somebody that's not eating and they are you know all this good food and you know I'm, i just don't have much of an appetite i don't feel like eating i don't want anything that's a red flag again anything that's out of the norm for holiday season those are the things we have to pay attention to because who passing up this good looking dress? You know, especially mm -hmm. when you know that is something that they've always looked forward to. Right. And it could be that they don't want to eat that dress. And I, again, I'm putting myself out there. Nobody can make a sweet potato pie like my grandma. Mm -hmm. I didn't eat sweet potato pies for almost 10 years after my grandmother passed because no one made them like her. Mm -hmm. And she didn't give you her recipe. So when I got to the point where I really wanted me a sweet potato pie and I just couldn't find one ever that tasted like hers when I did start back eating it, I got in that kitchen. I called my cousin who was like my grandmother's other daughter, um, but she was, you know, her um, grandmother too. Look, what, what all I need to put in this recipe? Because I need me a pie like my grandmother's, but I wouldn't. I, and everybody always knew I love sweet potato pie, but when I turned down, they were like, you don't want this? Babe, I wouldn't eat Elta Allen. That's my mama, y'all. I wouldn't eat my mama's sweet potato pie for nothing in the world because it wasn't Issy Duncan. So it's that kind of stuff you have to look for because if I'm a sweet potato, per sweet potato pie person and I'm sitting here telling you year after, you know, I just know I don't want that. That's a red flag. See about me. Girl, come on. You got to pull it together. But it's that type of stuff you have to look for. Um, and that separates that, you know, again, going back, that's what separates the holiday blues from just your seasonal or regular major depression. Thank you. Thank you. And y'all, y'all doing so good right now. So for everybody who's watching now, be sure to leave your questions or comments and um, your questions in the comments. Steven, do we have any right now? Not right now. All right. So we want y'all to put them in there because we want to make sure that we uh, answer what we can while we have this opportunity to do so. Right. So the next question that I have, I wanted to know, like, uh, what are some of the risk factors to be aware of during the holiday season? Risk factors. 
one of the did you want a glass out your mouth moving Dr. No, go ahead. Go ahead. okay one of the risk factors um again is deaths you know um those recent losses that is a huge risk factor if someone you know especially that were, had family members that was close to them um and that was there at a prior holiday season the previous holiday season and now they won't be this is a fresh new holiday season that's a risk factor um also like changing job because again, not being able to provide that expectation of being able to get all these things for your children, being able to, you know, participate in this stuff, this stuff costs money. But if I've lost my job, I don't have the money. That's a red flag. That's a risk factor. Um, and it increases the likelihood of someone being in that holiday blues place. Um, ooh, it's some more, but honey, when I get to talking- <laughs> Yes. separation in terms of relationship divorce oh yeah those Breakups. Are some things if you know that you have a associate or a friend that has went through um a separation a divorce you know stay close with them mm -hmm. during these times um because you know that familiar of being with this person is no longer like that right. anymore then if children are involved mm -hmm. that's a whole nother level of holiday blues Mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. the holiday is not going to look the same, even though, you know, mom and dad, you know, are still above ground, but we're no longer together as a family unit. Mm -hmm. And so not only would it impact the adults, it's going to impact the children. So we have to, you know, be mindful of those potential risks that's, that's out there. And I'm glad you brought up the separated people or, you know, those who don't have that love like they used to there. I was thinking, I think, um, how they blew, uh, some of the risk factors are so big and it's not just catered to people who have lost people. Like literally so many people feel how they blew those who are dealing with financial um, mm -hmm. concerns right now. That's a big one because like, like, um, the holidays coming up Christmas, you probably can't provide. So that's going to really put you down in the, in the dumps. Um, you know, those who have lost loved ones. And then I used to experience this. I don't know about anybody else. But I used to experience the singleness of going to the holiday parties. Like I'm the one that don't have anybody. That was back in the day y'all supposed to see. Cause I don't want <laughs> to look at that. <laughs> for him. But I, I was single forever. And I'm like, I get, I have to see all of these people in relationships, they husband, they boyfriends with them. And I'm just by myself every year. When are you gonna get a boyfriend? Like that you have, single people have to deal with that. Like you're not limited to the holiday blues. Like it's for everybody. So, mm -hmm. um, what are some ways that we can help minimize it though? You know, we had so, so, so many things that are risk factors that uh, go into the holiday blues, but how, what are some ways we can minimize it? What are some of the tips that you all can give us in minimizing the feeling of holiday blues? Well, first, um, acknowledging what we're feeling. Acknowledge your feelings. Um, and then have a safe place, meaning have that safe person that you can be vulnerable with to acknowledge, look, I'm not feeling good. Um, we didn't file for divorce. You know, he's over here or she's over there and the kids are here. Acknowledge what those feelings looking like and what it's feeling like and, you know, what it's doing to you. So we have to be able to acknowledge what's happening with us. And most times we, we have learned and we've been taught Mm -hmm. to suppress that stuff because right. especially in the African-American community, oh, you got to be strong. You got to toughen up. These people like going on and you like this. Mm -hmm. That is fine. But acknowledge what you're dealing with. Acknowledge what you're feeling. Most times we want to skate right on over what we're feeling. But we got to give people permission to feel through whatever it is that they're feeling through. We just don't want you to get stuck in that right. unpleasant place of emotions. We want you to acknowledge it. And then another thing, that is helpful is volunteer. Find something that you know that you enjoy doing. These nonprofit organizations, you right during this time of the season, you got people going out doing and giving. Find something that you can be active in to keep you moving. So volunteer for something and honestly be realistic mm -hmm. with what we know we need. Be I realistic know. with what we know we want be realistic about those things. Dr. Borns, what you got? Keep it moving. You know, 
keeping it moving. Seriously, guys, when you stay stuck and stay still and don't do anything, you allow yourself to succumb to all the the negative emotions and the the sadness and the just lack of motivation. Keep it moving. I'm not saying you got to exercise, but go do something, go somewhere. Even it's just walking outside your house. Um, The more that you move, the more endorphins you release, the better you feel. You don't need medicine to do something your body is already equipped to do naturally. Um, Being intentional really is something that I really want to stress. I can't stress it enough. Don't just up and say, okay, well, I'm going to go here because somebody's inviting you make plans like actually make plans because when we know when we know that we have something coming up we feel a little different we start looking forward to those things um rather than just people popping up and saying oh come on come with me over here because then that also adds stress because you're like well I don't have anything to wear my hair is not done and then so you are you know they're pushing you because they know you don't want to be stuck in the house but then you feel bad because you're not yourself out in this element be prepared for it. So make plans, be intentional about making plans. That way you can have your stuff together. You can be excited about what's to come and actually enjoy your time. Um, another thing that, you know, when we're talking about our wine, you it's good to drink. You know, there's nothing wrong with drinking socially, um, but just making sure we're not pouring our, you know, our feelings onto this glass, that we're just not getting so consumed and just wasted because we don't want to feel. Guys, that, you know, it is good to drink. If you can control your intake, mm-hmm. it's, I get it, you know, I'm a social drinker, but you can, when you're going through things, you have to be able to manage what you're taking in because it will give you this falsified feeling of oh I'm okay and then when that that you know where the alcohol wears off that feeling is back and guess what you're gonna do try to get drunk again and get drunk some more so you don't feel that way but it it, I promise you just being intentional a lot of times is really what will help you get through those that holiday blues because if you can keep it moving and all those suggestions that Dr. Jones gave you Mm -hmm it will get better. You will feel better because you are doing something. Everybody is worried about, you know, in the holiday time, we get so focused on what we can give or, you know, what we can buy other people and buy. It's not about buying. You know, I have to go back to, even though I buy my children gifts, I have to make sure I sit them down and let them know, even if mama didn't have a two pennies to rub together, you are going to get the message of what this holiday season is about anyway. You're going to sit at this table and tell me what you're thankful for. What are you thankful for God for giving you or blessing you with? Even at Christmas time, you're going to understand that it's more important to give than it is to receive. So we're going to go out here and try to see what, you know, what we can do in the community to help and bless other people, because that stuff in turn makes you feel good. When you're able to do something for people that's less fortunate than you and to see those people say, oh my God, thank you. Thank you so much. And just be so grateful for, for your actions, not your money, your actions, that makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. And, and Dr. Barnes, I'm glad that you spoke in terms of um, about the, the, the alcohol use. Let me say that because that's my area of practice, um, working with alcohol and drugs. Um, most times during these season in the holiday blues, you know, we have that false um, thought that let me engage mm-hmm. in you know, some substance use to make me feel better. That's a temporary coping mechanism. So that's not something, if you're feeling down, alcohol use is not something that you want to engage in. Okay. Um, if you're feeling down, any other substance or illegal substance, that's not something you want to engage in. All that's doing is giving you a temporary moment, mm-hmm. temporary fix of something that we need to acknowledge. Right. So I had to put that out there because I don't want people to be thinking, oh, let me have this. Let me have that. No, we have to be mindful um, when we're talking about, you know, alcohol use and other forms of substance use, especially when we approaching these holidays, because that's we have to be mindful um, about our intake with those things, um, because it can become harmful dangerous to ourselves and dangerous to other people and so it's a temporary fix to make you feel okay for that moment 
but it only makes you spiral even further down that, that chain of whatever it is that you're going through. Dr. Barnes, you hit on um, the plan ahead and even with the budget. We know Christmas come every year in December. December 25th, planning. like clockwork. Let's start yeah. planning. <laughs> so you won't have that stress. Ooh, December's here. Right. Let's start planning. So we won't have that burden of financial stress when we can plan accordingly if we can. Um, and then just plan accordingly, even with your menus, even with you get these invitations, invitations start going out in October sometime sooner. Go ahead and plan which invitation you're going to accept and which one you're going to decline and do those things ahead of time. And so you can have, you can help eliminate or minimize those stressors. Um, and then don't abandon your, your healthy habits. We know Thanksgiving, what, a week and a half or two weeks off, you know, keep with your healthy habits. If you know, <laughs> You about to go to this party, whatever that's coming up, grab some crackers or some nails before you eat home, drink you some water, then you won't have to overly indulge so true. <laughs> in those meals. So true. That's true. That's but, really but it is. And then we left come the new year. Now we feel in a whole nother kind of way mm -hmm. because we not feeling this well. <laughs> and the gym's gonna be packed. You're gonna have to fight over the elliptical. You right. just go the treadmill <laughs> yeah and, and you know what another thing too we don't share enough about is um setting aside our differences learning to respect how a family member or an associate how they show up during these holidays you know i'm i'm i want to say extend grace but grace is king learning to set aside our differences because we're not going to show up the same mm -hmm. and we all are evolving you know i wasn't dr jones two years ago i'm a year in mm -hmm. now but when you show up you know something gonna be different oh they this now so mm -hmm. learning to accept the growth and then the lack of growth when we come together as a family unit yeah. um during these holidays because somebody else joy can push somebody else, if they in that place of the holiday blues, somebody else excitement and joy can push them further down into that. So we wanna be mindful even how we show up um, because these holidays, you know, society says a time to be happy and joyful, but it may not be during this current moment for somebody else who have encountered some of those losses, be their job loss, family member, um, separation, divorce, uh, any other event, COVID, whatever that may be, health issues. Um, so it may not have them in that moment when probably last year, they was the one that was excited, party here, party there, but something happened that changed them in that moment for this season of the holiday blues. So we have to be mindful of other people around us. I was sharing with Dr. Bond, no, Dr. Johnson earlier. If can I read it, Dr. Yes, Johnson? You, you can. Thank you for, for even bringing it up. Thank you. Um, one of my social media um friends, and she's a you know um a, a dear person to me, but she made a post because she lost her mom um recently, and so she made a post. Everybody making plans for the holidays. How am I supposed to do? that when my queen is gone. Mm. When I read that, my heart just bottomed out. Yeah. You know, because this is real for, for, for a lot of people. And as you said, Dr. Johnson, this is a new season for you to experience these holidays without your mom. Um, so I can't even imagine, you know, and then to share that and her to be in such a vulnerable place to publicly share that. Yeah. I just hope that people that read that post, those hundred and whatever likes that he got, mm -hmm. that they picked up that phone. How you doing? How you feeling? Right. Or the roll back, let's get out and go for a ride. Mm -hmm. Because those are some things that we can do for those people and the people that we love that we know that they're dealing with a new thing right now. 
a new thing not having mom, a new thing not having brother, a new thing not having dad, a new thing not having a sister or brother to celebrate this holiday season of 2021. Right. It matters how we show up for them, not through a like. Guys, we got to come out of social media and connect with these people um, because that was hard for me. That was hard, even though I'm reaching out to her constantly because most times we hear people, it's like, well, that happened in January or that happened in February. They good now. Mm. You know, they just have to show up and still do what they have to do because life continue to go on. It doesn't mean that they good. Okay. So that was to me when she posted that, I was like, wow. And I want to add to that, Dr. Jones, it is very important as individuals, family members and friends of people that may be experiencing holiday blues, that we aren't so quick to turn the other cheek. Yeah. We may reach out to someone and they, you know, are just irritable, having a bad day that comes with holiday blues. That's another symptom we didn't discuss, but it is one. Um, and so we're like, oh, you know, I ain't, I ain't she in a funky mood. I ain't finna worry with her. I bet I won't ask her nothing else. Don't be so quick to turn the other cheek because we're offended or, you know, they are giving off some bad energy. Think about what they have probably endured and where that's coming from. It's not personal. So we can't, don't need to take it personal, but be willing to extend extend grace um and just say okay i know you having a bad moment right now i'm gonna call you back but don't give up on them. i said all that to say don't give up on them. that's what family members as friends as being in people's support system that's what that look like not allowing them to sit and soak and be in this depressive state and be lonely and isolate themselves when you know that they are probably going through. Encourage them, motivate them, and, and push them to, to come out of that, that dark place. Because if you do that, they will follow. You know, um, we all want the thing with the holiday blues, we're missing something. Mm -hmm. And so we want connection. We want love. Um, it's just that those people that pl played an important part of that puzzle is missing. Doesn't mean I want to give up on everybody else. I'm just having a hard time trying to figure out how to do that and still be happy and not feel guilty about being happy. So mm -hmm. don't give up on me. You know, hold my hand through it. Encourage me. Come sit with me. Come, say, well, let's go outside and take a walk, but be there with me right. um, to help me get through it. Right. And that, that was one of my questions. I think I had like, uh, what, how can family members be aware of the signs and watch for them and also be a support? And I think, I think some of us, you, you just have to be empathetic. Like put yourself in their shoes. Like if it was you, how would you want to be treated? Like, how would you feel? You know, sometimes you just have to really put yourself in people's shoes to kind of understand what they're going through in a sense. And that's what some of us may lack. But we have to gain that now, now, now in time, especially since COVID, like so much has changed. And I like what Dr. Tony was saying about come out of the computer, y'all. We've been behind the computer for a while. We've been home. We don't lost connection. We now have a time we can be in person with one another, like physical touch, everything. Let's give our all. Let's be present. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I appreciate y'all saying that. And also you sharing a story about you know her, because I was going to, well, I could bring that up later, but I was going to definitely talk about my mom, you know, in, in a sense, but we bring it up later, but Dr. Tony, oh, come on, this is, come this, on, why we did okay. it? Yeah, so like, it's just the same thing, like my mom would not be here, however, I'm not going to dwell on the fact that she won't be, I'm not going to be sad, you know what I'm saying, like it's, what can we do, well, let's sit around, and let's talk about the good times here. Let's talk about the last thing she did, the last Christmas party, the last Thanksgiving dinner. Like how they made us laugh, how she was so happy, how she liked this and like that. Like for everybody, it's different. But for me, that's how I plan to move around with my queen. My queen ain't here. However, we're going to remember her in a positive way. You know, we're going to remember her with the support system, with the family. And that's what I wanted to kind of share. That's something that maybe she can do. You know, I think my brother passed away. We definitely we got shirts. Like he died before things, two days before Thanksgiving. And we got shirts made for Christmas. Everybody was like, we want our shirts. But we, that was us just embracing him that he was still alive in our spirits. He was still present. Someone we could remember him instead of just thinking about everything that makes us sad. Let's think about some happy moments. He was here last year. 
the same mm-hmm. and the picture that was on the shirt was the Christmas before it was me and him taking a picture we were just taking a picture you know at the Christmas party sometimes we have to think about those good times just go through that moment have your support system there your family you know family unit and we talk about the good times that give you that hope to say I can make it you know what I'm saying and that's what I feel like is very important and um, I think and and two if I can add because um Dr. Johnson, you said a lot too in terms of um, finding your way, mm-hmm. you know, to process through this holiday season with it being the first, you know, without your mom. Mm-hmm. That's that's you finding your way. Um, and that's the thing that I hope that, you know, a lot of viewers that you find your way, um, how you process and what's going to be well and good for you, then those people that's around them that we see, we also, like Marissa, when you were saying about, you know, the sadness, Mm -hmm. my thing, and this is what I say, connection matters. Mm -hmm. Um, If you have children at home, you have a husband at home, you have siblings, um, and if you find whoever that person is that's that's in that, that place of being sad, just go crawl in the bed with them. Just mm-hmm. hold them. Sometimes we don't even have to say anything, just our presence mm-hmm. of just holding them and them just knowing that somebody is there. Because Dr. Borns, you mentioned about um, some of those outward symptoms of irritation, frustration. Um, beautiful people, please know when, when humans are hurting, it don't come out like we hurting. Right. Um, or that we need help. And so that fear kick in for us. And so that fear kick in and it shows up with anger, shortness, um, distance. And I'm talking about in our tone, if you call and I'm, I'm okay, I'm all right. Well, let me call you back. And then don't wear that because that's not yours. This is something that the person that has lost a loved one. This is something they going through. Don't put on that. Let them grieve through this. Mm-hmm. Um, and go be with them. If you able, you ain't but 20, 30 minutes away, go show up at their house. I know I had to do that with a close friend of mine. And right now, December coming in, her birthday is in December. A few days after her birthday, she had to bury her mom. So, you know, that was a struggle. So she wasn't answering that phone. I got in the car and rode on down to Brandy. And I'm just going to sit there. And so we have to do that. I'm okay. I call you back. You telling me you okay. But those people, please understand. Saying we okay. Sometimes it's saying okay. I'm not okay. And I really need you to just come hold me. Yeah. And I'm just telling the truth. Sometimes our presence to just hug and be with somebody when we know they didn't lost somebody that is so important to them, just your presence matter. And that goes back to basically what I was saying earlier about paying attention, not taking things personal that people are giving you because it's not about you. They still need you and they still need you in their corner. Um, and Dr. Johnson, for you, I think that's a really good coping skill for you to take on and how you plan on um, embracing your mom's presence and her spirit with you throughout the holiday season. But one thing I know as humans, because we're all guilty of it, when we are in that uh, season of loss, again, whatever that loss may be, we tend to focus on the loss and not the things we have left. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things I really want to emphasize uh, as a way of getting through this holiday season and your holiday blues is that being grateful for what you still have with you. You know, you may have lost the job, but you still got your health. You know, you may have lost your your boyfriend or or your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. but you still have all these other people that's in, that's supporting you through this breakup. You know, you may have lost a parent, but you have all these memories. You may have lost a sibling. You know, it, so many people lose siblings before they even have time to build memories. Mm-hmm. Some of them lose siblings, you know, before they even, or, or family members before they, that family member is able to even 
um, interact with their children or, you know, just, just your, your support system in general and your family. If you were able to get so many years with that person, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing. And so we tend to overlook those blessings and being grateful for those opportunities and the things we still have. And we focus and put all of our energy in what we've lost. And so, you know, it, it's very important that that is one of our key things, gratefulness. What am I grateful for? What do I still have mm -hmm. in my spirit of, in, in that lost season? I, I, I took a loss for something and it's necessarily not always a loss, but you've gained. What have you gained? What are you grateful for? We have to start taking the extra effort to think positively rather than negatively. I mean, human nature, our thoughts is easier. It's easy to think of all the negative things. It takes work to think about those positive things, but we have to put that work in and take that extra effort if it means my well-being, if it means me being healthy mentally, emotionally, physically during this holiday season. Mm -hmm. Okay. I appreciate that. We got a couple of questions I got to ask. I got to ask these questions. Can I see your uh, thing, please? The first one is, how long should the holiday blues last? That was one of them that someone asked. Well, into Jan when you get into January after the Christmas, New Year season, again, you have to think about New Year's. New Year's is still a holiday. It's a whole new year embarking on a whole new journey without whatever you're without. And so once you get through January, though, and you notice that you're, you're still in that place, then we have grown beyond holiday blues okay um but november through january if that's how you're feeling during those months those that time frame holiday blues but if we extend past january then we're not operating with holiday blues then we're looking at a more clinical issue and that we need to um talk with someone about right okay all right one more thank you for that dr bones the other one is and you answered this earlier in the uh, short synopsis but I think I don't think they were on then is traveling on your own a good way to deal with the holiday blues for example some people may not want to be around Christmas trees or decoration during Christmas because of a loved one that they lost so instead of staying in town is it hip to dismiss yourself from the holiday atmosphere altogether it's not healthy isolation basically it's not healthy <laughs> Let me tell you, Christmas is Christmas no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. You leave your town and go to another town. Guess what? You are bound to see some decorations. You turn on the music in that car while you're on that road trip. Guess what? You're bound to hear some Christmas music. Mm -hmm. You can't escape the holiday season. You just can't. As painful as it may be for you, we have to learn how to fight our way through things and not run from them. You know, as, as humans... We are born with two, we, we respond to situations two ways. We can either, we fight or flight syndrome, okay? We either run from them or we, we deal with it. Running from it just gives you, starts to create a unhealthy pattern of behavior and coping skills. Mm -hmm. So you never really learn how to deal with issues. And so those issues continue to control you. One thing you don't ever want is to be controlled by a situation, okay? No matter how hard life gets, I need to always make sure that I'm in control of, of me, you know? And so not this situation I'm dealing with, not the season I'm in, not my environment, not all this other stuff, me. You know, that's my, that's my responsibility is for me to be in control. So running, going somewhere else. Now you want to take a trip during the holiday season and help create new memories by all means. But if you're running and, and I say running, because that's what it sounds like you're asking. Mm -hmm. Running is not a healthy coping skill because Christmas is going to be Christmas, regardless if you're at home or if you're in Atlanta. Or if you in another country, it's still going to be recognize as that time. Um, so I'll go back to the same question, three questions that I presented before. Mm -hmm. Ask and self, the how, the why, and the what, when it comes to my travel, mm -hmm. what is it that I want to get out of this? Is it to build new memories or is it that I'm running and not want to address this situation? Um, why am I doing this? Um, um, and, and how would I do this? And so asking yourself those three questions, but at the same time, acknowledging 
why you're doing what you're doing. And honestly, we really have to get to a place where we can honestly forgive ourselves and allow sadness and grief to have its place with us. And a lot of times we don't do that because society has taught us to suck it up. Mm -hmm. um, this person is gone and ain't nothing else you can do back. Yeah, you could still be in the moment and acknowledge your sadness and your grief when it comes to the people that you love that's no longer here. Um, and, and that's easier said than done, yep. especially when some of us hadn't lost close people. But when we have lost close people, we understand you know what? Today's just one of them days. I have to stay at home and, and be okay with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and you were talking about the boundaries early, Dr. Tony. So give us those boundaries because we need it. I'm one person and my boundaries are very, very rigid. They're not <laughs> where they need to be. So give us some of the boundaries that we need to put in place. Well, even no. when we talk about the boundaries, Understanding that no does not have to add, have an explanation. Mm -hmm. It's just no. It's not. And if the person love and respect you, they will receive your no without defense. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Um, I think that's a boundaries is going to be different. Mm -hmm. that, but that's a big thing. You're saying that's that's a thing. That's a big thing because a lot of times we feel like we have to that that we're entitled to provide excuses and explanations for why I just don't want to say it to you know. But again, that's ingrained in us. It's learned behavior, and so when we are talking about establishing boundaries. As adults, we have to understand that you don't need an explanation. You don't have to give anyone an explanation when you make a decision to do something. If your decision is no, then it's no, mm -hmm. you know, and being, but you have to be comfortable with that because a lot of times people try and start implementing and, and putting boundaries in place. And they allow others to double back and, and make them change their minds because they're not comfortable with with setting those boundaries. You have to be okay with with setting boundaries. Now, it's one thing when you are um, you're just avoiding, and mm -hmm. and your loved ones know that, and they're like, mm -mm, "Come on here." But when you are really like, "Okay, this is what I need. I need this time for me. I need to engage in some self care right now. Being around other people just wouldn't be." you know, conducive for me or my, my health, I think I'm going to just say no to this event. Right. You know, it, it's a difference between those no's. No, when I mean it and I know it's for the betterment of me, then absolutely, that's that boundary. But when, when we do try to use it as a, a, a scapegoat and to get out of an avoidance or isolate, then, you know, hopefully people are able to read through the different no's. You know, uh, it's a little tricky, but... It's important that you know you do have the right to to set those boundaries. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, and, and now that we're talking about boundaries, I would hope you know if who the the viewers if they are not this is not something that they this is not a season for them to mm -hmm. be dealing with um see you know the holiday blues or any of those things. Go ahead and start establishing some boundaries now because honestly, you really have to start practicing those boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, and testing them because you have to get comfortable with those boundaries, which even with yourself mm -hmm. and then other people, even your family within your house, they have to learn to adjust to these new set boundaries that you just established. So, um, so just consider start, start planning, setting some boundaries. Even now, once you get out viewing this, start setting some boundaries out around what is it that you are not gonna do and what you gonna do, even down to that budget. If I set a thousand dollar budget for the Christmas holidays for gifts and that include for everybody, <laughs> well, if it said a thousand and one, so I'm gonna have to come out cause I'm not gonna spend that dollar. You're you know, right. but establishing those boundaries and, and planning in advance, you know. But the truth is those things need to be in place even beyond and after yeah. the holiday season, Absolutely. you know. You need boundaries, period. I had a client, we, I was laughing, Tony, when you were talking because actually one of my sessions today at work, I had a client um, I was following up 
about her implementation of her boundaries. She said, Dr. Warren, some folks think I'm crazy in my house because they're not used to her trying to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, they're side eyeing her and they're like oh she tripping and so she was like if they think I'm crazy now they don't take me serious and I'm like of course because this is new but you have to get the it's consistency you have to be consistent you have to see it through if you don't take you serious no one else will true true all right so my last question is for those who are dealing with the holiday blues right now today going into the season of Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, what would you tell them? What advice would you give? Uh, my advice was, was that I thought about earlier was to have grace for yourself. Be, have mm -hmm. grace, you know, really, really have grace. Um, I like the idea of pre-planning for the single women I dealt with that for a while. Look, you already know how you're going to feel when you go to the holiday party. Look, get you some other single friends. Y'all have a staycation. Go to a hotel. Enjoy each other's company. Kind of talk, relax, love on each other. Um, you know, and it's okay to start a new tradition. For those of us who've been following the same one, it's okay to start a new one. It's okay to revamp um, and try something different. Um, those are just a few that I have. So what do you have for those who are dealing with it? For me? I would say establish a list of individuals that you know, that you know, that you can count on. If it's one o'clock in the morning, they're gonna take your call and be with you. Um, that if you, they can hear it in your voice and when you listen and having a conversation with, 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 with them, they tend to uplift your spirit Make a list of those people that you know, that you know can help pull you out of that space. Mm -hmm. So just make that list. Cause to me, connection is so important. And we, it's like we didn't get to where we minimize the importance of human connection, but make that list of at least three to four people that you know that you can call when you at that state. So if one not available, you can go to that second one. So that's what I'm saying, at least four, because life is busy for a lot of people. So we don't want to just put that area of hope on one person. So establish that list with at least four people that you know, at least I can count on this person to pull me through. Um, so establishing that list and, um, you know, being mindful of establishing when you know you you about to embark on these holiday seasons that's gonna put you in what we call the holiday blues, mm -hmm. um, establish a routine. I'm gonna go get a massage, regardless of how I'm doing, set that appointment for the massage, set that appointment to go out and you know do something that you enjoy. So it's like establishing, you know, a scheduling for I'm going on this day. I'm going to do this. And so that'll help bring back any form of energy that you lost. It'll help recuperate that energy. So if you feel your tank going half and you know what it looked like, if it get below that tank, go ahead and pull out one of your toolbox, that friend or an activity that you enjoy. I love that safety plan. And um, I don't think people understand that when we talk about support systems, it's important to understand that each person in your support system plays a different role. And so we can't put the responsibility on just one person. And then when they don't respond the way we want, we think, oh, I don't have a support system. No, you do. But you have to understand in that moment, that wasn't a good time because they're human too. That wasn't a good time for them either. So who else can I go to? And you have a, a clear picture of those people in in the role that they play um, and making sure that, you know, you are definitely not putting all of your responsibilities or your needs, emotional needs on just one person. You have a system, it's a support system, which means more than one. So making sure that you are aware who those people are. Um, but for me, I'm gonna just go back to what I stated earlier, because I think it's very, it's very critical. Um, and that's being intentional you know, being intentional about what we're doing and, and, and putting it in place. Um, it's one thing to not know what's going on with, with your body, but when you know what's going on with your body and you know that you're down 
because of X, Y, and Z. Don't just know that and do nothing. Be intentional about wanting to come out of that. Um, because when you don't do anything about it, it consumes you. And then it starts to not just affect you again during that holiday season, but it carries over into the other areas of your life. And then we're not talking about a, a, condi a minor condition as holiday blues. We're talking about a more serious uh, a more serious concern, a medical concern, actually. Um, and so we don't want to allow things that we have control over to be extended longer than it needs to be. So being very intentional about about what we do and the plans that we make, um, engaging in self-care, you know, holiday time, music is just everything. I don't care how bad I feel. I don't care if I've had a stressful day. I love Christmas time because honey, me and my Christmas music, we be jamming. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because Marissa, I thought about you when you were talking about your, uh, <laughs> When you were talking about how you used to feel at the singles party, right. honey, my favorite, let, let me tell you, my favorite Christmas song, y'all, I'm so sorry about this, but my favorite Christmas song is What Do the Lonely Do at what Christmas? What Do the Lonely Do? <laughs> Baby, let me, let my daughter be like, Mama, that song is depressing. Y'all, I be belting that song, honey. That right. is my favorite Christmas song. But again, you, you take from it whatever you want to. Mm -hmm. To me, that woman sung her heart out on that song, baby. And okay. I wasn't thinking about nothing she talking about on it. Like she, she sung that song. But right. you have to, you know, we we use it for what we need it for. You use music for what you need it for. Music is a very good uh, uh coping skill and, and self-care technique. Get you a candle, like, you know, Bath and Body Works come with their candles during the holiday season. Get you a good smelling candle. Light your candle. Listen to you some good music. Start developing healthy self-care routines because it's important in the holiday season and beyond. Um, because again, we pour so much of ourselves and give so much of ourselves that we don't put anything back. Your car is not gonna run, continue to run when you are on E, neither will your body. So you have to make sure you are giving yourself the energy it needs and the attention it needs so that it can keep going. Yes. Right. I agree, I agree. So um, do you have anything else to All right. So I, I have appreciated you ladies. I think this has been very, very informative. Um, for those who will see it tomorrow, later tonight, when they get out of work, when they get out of Bible study, this is literally going to touch them. If you have any comments or anything, please still put them in the comments. We'll get back with you. Any questions, we'll get back with you. You can inbox mm -hmm. us or you found something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Steve. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, how do you deal with the holiday blues if you're already depressed? It's gonna intensify it. Know that it's going to, it's almost like you're adding fuel to the fire, okay? So because you know that you're already depressed going into this phase of the season, then definitely try to go ahead and get a head start on dealing with it. Um, not just knowing it, just like I was just saying, not just knowing I'm depressed and, and not taking the necessary steps to take care of you. Um, go ahead and start seeing, try to reach out and find you a counselor, find somebody to talk to, um, to make sure that, that you are taking care of yourself. Because what you don't want to do is take that depression into with, let those two merge. Okay. Um, and so that's a recipe that we don't want, um, especially when there are people out here that can definitely help you through this, through that phase. I agree. Thank you for that. Anything else, please? All right. Hopefully, if anything else comes up, we'll get back with you all. But I have appreciated these women, these African American doctors. Um, they are amazing. They've been doing this work for a long time. So we have been definitely informed on tonight. Everything that they said, you know, we can definitely take it on in our lives as we go every year during the holiday season, we can take something from what they said, right? So I want you all to, um, this, this video is also going to be posted on YouTube, so you can always go back and watch it. It's on live right now, so you can always go back and watch it on IG as well as uh, Facebook. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. It's been a joy having y'all on my show. Uh, this is the first of many. So I'm going to have them every season, whether they know it or not. This is the <laughs> first of many. I, I think I look up to them. They are so encouraging, so inspiring. And I'm new to this, but they, you know, they've been doing it for a while. So I learned from them in so many ways. So I'm very grateful. Thank you all for being on the show to help us with the holiday blues as we go through the seasons of Christmas, Thanksgiving, and New Year's. Um, is it anything else that you all would like to say before we get off? 
Happy holidays, everybody. Same here. Happy holidays and be mindful to stay connected to someone that is going to make sure that you stay well. All right. All right. I love y'all family. I love you too. Love you too. And we will see y'all next time. All right. Good all night. Right. Good night.